Hello, everybody. Tom Nappy here, and welcome into this segment of HCAM Sports Talk. Joining me for some NFL talk and maybe some more stuff, we got Andy Barron, Jared Keene, and Steve Watson. The whole crew is here. Guys, how are you? Good. Glad to be back. Good to be back, guys. It's been a while, and Steve, glad to have you back. And uh, hopefully uh, you can hear us okay. But in any case, we are going to talk some NFL. We'll do our picks. Uh, Some interesting upsets occurred this past week. And a very unpleasant New England Patriots game occurred. Uh, So, guys, uh, Patriots losing the Miami Dolphins 15-10. to Very controversial call at the end. Uh, You know, say what you want about the rule. But, I mean, I think you got to go with what your eyes tell you. And my eyes tell me that was a touchdown. Uh, But there were many reasons the Pats lost that game. Uh, Sly missing a field goal didn't help because then they would have only needed a field goal in the end. So that was one of the reasons... And they just couldn't get anything going offensively at all. The defense played pretty well, not bad. Uh, But lack of offense, uh, and that's something that this team's going to have to deal with all season long. Uh, Andy, what were your thoughts about that pretty brutal Pats game? Beyond brutal, Tom. I mean, and we were all talking yesterday. This team can't do anything right. This is infuriating watching this team. Seriously. Like, um, this is internal now. This is an external. Because you got so many issues right now that you're dealing with, um, you know, with your Gerard Mayo and whatnot, but they just cannot get out of their own way. I've never seen anything like this. It's been it's been well beyond 30 years since this team has played this poorly. This is the teams that I remember in the late 80s, early 90s, just awful, just getting arrested off the field. I mean, people fighting with each other. This is getting really, really bad, and it's not going to get any better. Um, Yeah, they only lost by five points, but it felt like they lost by more. They're, They're just not good enough. It's just that simple. They're not good enough. And you know what else really upsets me too? Okay, yesterday, here's a prime example, guys. I don't know if you agree with me or not so Kendrick Bourne comes back I said in our text hey great to see him out there he's looking he's at some fire didn't see him for the rest of the game why aren't they putting these guys out there seriously Antonio Gibson Jared you made this comment about how you like the way Antonio Gibson runs I do too I, I think he's actually pretty good and they stopped going away from him what are we doing here seriously stupid penalties just just Dumb coaching decisions. Really, I'm tired of it. Like this is this team is not getting any better, any better. That that win against the Bengals was just a complete fluke. Um, they are who they thought what we thought we were. And I got to tell you, it's not going to be pretty this week against Houston. It's going to be bad. no. They're going to get destroyed by Houston. Jared, what are your thoughts about the Pats? I don't really know what else there is to say, but, I mean, Andy hit the nail on the head with a lot of things there. Uh, This team stinks, and it's only going to get worse. You look at four of your six captains to start the season are either benched on IR or getting arrested. Jabril Pepper is getting arrested for all sorts of fun stuff in Braintree. Uh, David Andrews on IR. Uh, Jacoby Brissett potentially getting benched. Um, Who else? Kyle Duggar, um, you know, injured, whatever. I mean, that's four of your six captains are, like, in the crapper right now. I mean, this team is is awful. And again, it's only going to get worse. Um, the offense is atrocious. Um, Brissett is atrocious. I don't know, but you can, you know, and obviously there's talk today that they might go to May. Like, why? Why even bother <laughs> at this point? I mean, the season is, is a joke. Um, you get them hurt with this old line. You know, as far as the as far as the controversial call, technically it's the correct call. Um, Steve is right. Um, does that mean I agree with the call? No, I think that rule is crap. Uh, part of my language, but uh, you know, 
yeah, regardless of that, they had other chances to win the game, and they didn't. And, again, it's only going to get worse. They're going to get absolutely shellacked this week. Maybe 49 nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, Houston, they got a good offense. They got a great defense. They're going to shred you. Steve, any additional thoughts you want to add about that uh, horrid Patriots game this past Sunday? It was just absolutely atrocious. It was not the fact that this team is losing games. We knew that was going to happen. They don't have the talent to match up with most teams in the league. It's all the other stuff. Yesterday he was coaching. He had 12 penalties for over 100 yards. And it's just all sloppy, undisciplined stuff. It just, it just can't happen. You had bad play calling, bad coaching in general across the board. You've had off the field stuff this year. What is this franchise doing? What's the direction? What's the vision? The franchise is going in a bad direction, not just on the field. This, the Patriots used to, be, used to be the gold standard. So the question needs to be for the higher ups of Foxborough, do you want to get back to being the gold standard? Or did you, do you want to be the, the dregs of the league? Because right now, it seems like the latter of the two. The standards have vanished in Foxborough. It's an absolute joke on and off the field. And just wait till later in the season when the weather's not that nice and that place is half full. Just wait. So, yeah, they've lost four straight and they're going to lose a lot more in a row probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you got to think, you know, eventually the fans are going to get fed up. I mean, obviously they had a lot of years of great success. Uh, you could argue maybe more successful than any other organization over the past uh 15 years or so, but Brady's gone. Belichick's gone. Yep. Uh, all, all your legendary talent is gone. This is a whole new team, and eventually people are going to get fed up and they're going to stop wasting their time and wasting their money going to these games because the prices haven't gotten any lower. Uh, so you got to imagine that eventually people are going to get fed up. You got to give them a good product. Uh, obviously, you know, New England fans are loyal. Uh, they stuck by this team in the Bledsoe days and through the 80s and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't think people uh, are going to be as loyal this time around because really you had a good thing going and you kind of messed it up, like really messed it up. Uh, I mean, even if you let go of Brady, there's a ch you could have done it better. You, you could have done it. I mean, look at the box, for example. Brady leaves the Bucs, they bring in Baker Mayfield, and guess what? They're right back in the playoffs the next year. And that's because they have a good, uh, talented offense. They have a good, talented team. They have talent on both sides of the ball. It's not all about, you know, the quarterback in Tampa. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of the reason Brady got fed up in the end was a lot of it was about the quarterback for many years here, especially towards the end. Uh, but right now you got nothing. And people don't want to see nothing. They want to see something. So mm -hmm. yeah. yep. I guess the question is, how long until people start getting fed up with this team? You know, I, I don't I don't think you're filling every game this year. I, mean, not I think like people this. are start, already starting to get fed up with this team. I mean, it's it's ugly. I mean, this is like, you know, people thought, I mean, you know, last year couldn't really get any uglier. This is really ugly right now. This is like uglier than ugly. I mean, you know, again, all the stuff on the field, all the stuff off the field. Like, again, I think people already clearly are starting to get fed up. I mean, I think I'm, I think I can speak for probably some of us here. I mean, we're all starting to get, I think, get fed up. Um, I mean, this is brutal. This what is, is this team? Brutal. When did they win another game? I, I don't know. You got Houston? They don't. <laughs> Maybe they Tennessee? <laughs> no, I don't even think they could be Tennessee. Probably not. Tennessee put up 31 points on the Dolphins. Are you kidding me? That's true, actually. <laughs> that was that was horrible. Like, how do you give up thirty one points to Tennessee? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> and you like you you don't want to put Drake May in there. You know he's better than Brissett, no. but no. he'll get There's killed. No with point the in putting him in. Yeah. There's, There's no, no point. point. Yeah. There's and no and point. that's the other thing too. What were they thinking? Drafting a, a quarterback? What was it? Fourth overall, and not putting any kind of offensive line around him at all. What were they thinking? That was ridiculous. Guys, I know I said this yesterday, but man, Caleb Williamson and Jaden Daniels, they're looking pretty good right now. You could have had those guys. You could have had Marvin Harrison Jr. And you passed. 
But we don't know how Drake May is going to look because we haven't seen the guy play. So I think he's. You I, know, think I don't he's want to go down good. that road just yet. But um, still. But even if they had Caleb Williams, they have no O line. Do you think Caleb Williams would look as good as he's looked? Uh, you know, over in Chicago, or uh, you know, uh, the Washington quarterback uh, who looks fantastic over there Ian would look Daniels. good here. I don't think anyone would look good here. With this O line, this O line's a travesty. Position. And they haven't invested in the team. And that all right. starts at the top. All they care about, just like the Red Stars, all they care about is filling seats, selling concessions, all that stuff. The on-field product, the results, they don't care. And it shows. It doesn't matter what they say. That's what their track record the last handful of years has proven. Yeah. They don't care. And they're not going to care. And I and I think, Steve, right now, um, you know, Celtics and Bruins starting up very shortly, and the intention's all going to go to them because those team two teams are clearly – Rightfully so. Are clearly – I mean, more, the Celtics more than the Bruins are clearly ready to win another title. The Patriots and Red Sox aren't even close. Not even close. No. Nope. Not even close. Yeah, it's going to be a long season for the Patriots. A long, brutal season, just like last season was. And, you know, at first I thought, yeah, maybe they should be a little better this year, but I'm starting to rethink that. I don't know anymore. I don't, in fact, I doubt they will be even a little bit better than last year. Uh, in fact, they could actually be worse, believe it or not. That's how brutal this team is. So I think they're guaranteed a top three pick right now. You have to think top Here's the question. Who do you guys take if you're a top three pick? Do you go Travis Hunter, who is an old lineman? Okay, you need an old lineman. I think you have to go a line. As much as yes. I want Travis Hunter, I, think, I agree. I think you have to go a line. The well, line is, is awful. They, they should have they should have went a line in the second, third, and fourth round. This this draft is what they should have done. Like, don't even bother getting receivers and running backs until you could protect your quarterback. Until you could give him some time in the pocket. You know, if Brissett had more time in the pocket, I believe that you would see better offense. I mean. I don't think Brissett's been terrible, and I don't really put the blame on him. I put the blame on the fact that, I mean, he hasn't been great, but there's no O-line. There's no protection for the guy. There's no receivers. Uh, you're breaking in all new receivers. I mean, DeMario Douglas and Jalen Polk look like they might have potential, but without an O-line, no one has potential. So that's the major problem with this team, and that's what they have to address. But, yeah. It's going to be a long season. So uh, with that, how about we get into NFL picks, guys? Well, uh, last week wasn't so pretty. And there it is, the picks from last week. Woof. The red is incorrect, the green is correct, and look at those horrible records. I wow. went... I went six and seven. Jared went seven and six. Me and him are now tied at the top. Steve, you won the week at eight and five. Congratulations. Well done, Steve. Well done. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Andy and Mike is are only a, a, uh, they went six and seven. Andy's six games out. Mike is eight games out. So there they are. Our brutal picks from last Dreadful week. A lot, of, a lot of upset. Just so bad. So bad at four o'clock. It's horrible. Yes. Yeah. Who would have expected uh, Arizona to beat San Francisco while the Giants beat Seattle? On a walk off blocked field goal, right? Or like a late a blocked field goal at the end of the game? What? Was crazy. That was ridiculous. How do you man. lose that game at home to the Giants? It's just, come yep. on. Who's going to win the NFC West now? Because San Francisco doesn't look that good. So I have no clue who's going to win. I think it's up for grabs right now, guys. I mean, it yeah, Tom, Tom's right. I mean, it could be anybody. It, it, it could be the Rams. It could be Arizona because the 49ers do not look good. No, not at all. It, it's going to be interesting. Speaking of the 49ers and the NFC West, they start off our week six picks. Uh, San Francisco at Seattle is your Thursday night football game. Two teams that desperately need a win after brutal losses on Sunday. San Fran losing to Arizona, Seattle losing to the Giants. I'll start it out. I'm going to go San Fran. I think their loss is a little more forgivable because it was a division opponent. 
that actually has given San Fran hard times, even when they're bad and San Fran's good. And Seattle lost to the Giants at home. So I can't forgive that one. So give me the 49ers in this one. Seattle might be falling apart. Uh, Jared, who do you got? Uh, oddly, I'm going to go Seattle. I think this is one of those weird games where you think probably Seattle's going to come down and, and lay another stinker uh, after losing to the Giants. They're going to kind of use that weird reverse sort of thing and uh, actually take Seattle at home. Uh, again, San Fran, as we know, is not good and has been vulnerable to a lot this year. So I'm going to weirdly go Seattle if they get schlacked, whatever. But again, this division is pretty wide open, so... Normally, I'd go San Fran in a heartbeat, but I don't know about right now. All right. Steve, who do you got? I'm going to go with Seattle because it's in Seattle. If it was in San Fran, I'd probably go San Fran. And I think Seattle will win that division. I think they're the the least flawed right now of all those teams. You know, Maybe if San Fran was healthy and it actually looked good, which they haven't. You know, They've given two games away. Um, Arizona's not there yet, and I, I think the Rams are terrible. The Pats could actually beat the Rams next month. They, they, that maybe could be one win for the Pats. But Seattle. No way. Great. Tyron Williams is going to run wild on them, baby. <laughs> You're not beating the Rams. The Rams are they're one in four, but they're like they're not a they're not terrible. They've had a lot of tough. They're opponents. not terrible. <laughs> they're not. They're pretty awful. I mean, when you look at the Rams, they don't look as bad as the Patriots. I'm sorry. No one looks as bad as the Pats do. Kyron Williams is going to run all over him. Six touchdowns that day. Mark my words. Andy, who are you going with? Um, I am going to go with the 49ers here. I, I just, I'm going to stick with you, Tom, that I can't, how, still, how do you lose at home to the Giants? That is just inexcusable. Inexcusable. I can't take you seriously. And I don't think the 49ers are playing well. This is going to be kind of an ugly game, and it really could determine. It's a, it's a big game in the NFC West. I think the 49ers squeak this one out, and it will be a tight one. All right. Andy, tilt your camera down, will you? <laughs> there you go. All right, moving on to the Sunday games. We got another, uh, what is it, a London game, 930 in the morning. Uh, they get a beauty this week. Jacksonville at Chicago. Uh, wow. Well, Jacksonville, they had a... Really nice win last week, I must say. They beat Indy, big division win. And they beat them in uh, kind of a back-and-forth battle. So uh, I'd say it was probably the most impressive game Jacksonville has had so far this season. And Chicago dominated Carolina. So that I also consider that impressive because Carolina's played well the last couple of weeks with Andy Dalton. Uh, so the fact that they dominated them and it wasn't, you know, uh, a game they just squeaked by. I consider that somewhat impressive. A little torn on this one. So, on that note, we'll start with Steve. Who do you got? I want to go with Chicago. You know, two teams who had, um, you know, solid wins this past week. But I think the Bears have been a bit better overall. So, I want to go with them in this one. All right. I like it. Andy, who do you got? I'm going to go with the Jaguars. Hey, I finally got a pick of the week uh, right last week um, with the Jacksonville beating Indianapolis. And uh, Chicago has played well, but um, I think the Jaguars are going to pull this one out. I think it's going to be another tight, kind of an ugly game. But um, I like the Jags here. And, uh, yeah, congratulations on your pick of the week. I definitely saw the video and definitely put it on the show. Definitely. Um Jared, who do you got? I also picked the Jags last week, and I'm picking them again this week. Um, yeah, I think it's a weird game again where Chicago might be regresses a little bit this game, coming off a win against Carolina. Um, Tank Bigsby looks really good for, for the Jags at running back. I think he's going to overtake Travis Etienne as the starter. Um, yeah, I don't know. Weird game. Brian Thomas Jr. is nasty. And, uh, yeah, I think the Jags weirdly get it done this week again. All right. Well, I'm going to go Chicago. Uh, they're the home team here. They've looked good. I think their defenses look pretty decent. Uh, Caleb Williams playing well, uh, played very well last week. And uh, I guess if they could beat Indy, I think they could probably beat uh, Jacksonville. 
So give me Chicago. By the way, I started Joe Flacco this week in fantasy. Top tier. Wow. What a, that what is slow. daring. Like, and it wow. paid off, didn't I it? Joe Flacco and, and Joe Burrow. Massive, massive QB week. Massive. Congratulations. That's a great start. Who would have ever still, thought that Joe Flacco was going to ball like that? I know he, they he lost, went, but he went it wasn't because of 33 fantasy points. He was unbelievable. I know they lost, but it wasn't because of Flacco. They just had no defense at all. I'm down by six still, though, going into tonight, and I got a couple of guys going tonight, so we'll see. There you go. I'm up by 80 heading into tonight, so I think I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the Sunday games. This is a, a very interesting game, perhaps the best of the 1 o'clock games, although there's a couple decent ones. Washington at Baltimore. This is going to be a heck of a game. Washington has been red hot. They've won four straight. Uh, Baltimore, they just got a beauty of a win over Cincinnati. It was one of the few games that I had right in my picks, shockingly enough. Uh, so, Andy, you can start this one. Who do you got? I'm buying in to Washington. I really like the way they're playing here. Um, believe it or not, I'm still not really sold on the Ravens. I still think they're a, a hot and cold team. And I, I just really like the way Jaden Daniels is playing. He has totally rejuvenated this Washington team. And uh, this is going to be the week that they're going to go in and people are going to finally going to start saying that, hey, this Washington team could be a serious threat in the NFC. They're going to get it done this week. All right. By the way, go hard on the over on this game. This is going to be a scoring fest. Oh, no doubt. Jared, who do you got? I'm also going with Washington. Uh, the Ravens have looked susceptible to the pass recently. Joe Burrow absolutely lit it up against him this weekend for five TDs. Um, I'm not saying Jaden Daniels is necessarily Joe Burrow, but is obviously playing maybe almost better than any QB right now. So, um, yeah, I'm buying into Jaden Daniels, Washington. Give me, give me the commanders here. Let it rip. All right. Steve, who do you got? A fun fact about this one. The powers that be tried to flex this to Sunday night, but CBS protected it. So I should tell you, it's a good matchup. Yep. It'd be so much better than Buffalo at the Jets. No way, that's one. It'd be so much better than the Bengals at the Giants. Oh, Oh, yeah, a million times better. But with the broadcasting rules, you know, networks do get to protect games. So, yeah, this game gets stuck in the 1 o'clock slot. Probably will be the best game of the day. Uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens. You know, if, if it was in in Washington, I'd probably go with them. I'm going to go with the Ravens because they're at home. I'm going to agree with Steve. I'm going Ravens as well, and I think it's going to be a 49-46 to 46 final. Uh, this is going to be a fun game. High scoring, I'm telling you. But, yeah, Ravens are at home. I think that's really the only reason I'm picking them. And, and you know, look, I believe Washington is good. I think they will – make the playoffs. I think they'll be competitive, but they've had kind of a soft schedule. Baltimore's had a very hard schedule. So Baltimore has been a little bit more battle tested. So I, I think the Ravens survive a cl very close game at home. All right. Arizona at green Bay, even though Arizona was able to get the win over the 49ers last week, I'm going Green Bay here. Is anyone going to take Arizona? That is a big no across the board. Green Bay across the board to beat Arizona. I don't trust Arizona, you know, and it's those division games like Arizona and San Francisco, especially in the West, that you got to look out for. Those are the ones that you'll get an upset on. Uh, Houston at New England. I don't think we even have to go around the table on this one either. Uh, I'm just going to mark us all down for Houston. Unless anyone objects, Steve, you sure? All right. Positive. I think Houston is going to win by a lot. Yeah. Yes. I got Houston winning this one uh, 40 to 3. All right. <laughs> Tampa at New Orleans. Since we haven't witnessed Monday Night Football yet, we'll skip this one. Uh, Cleveland at Philly. Uh, Cleveland is an absolute mess. Philly is kind of a mess themselves, but they're a little less of a mess. I'm going Philly. Is anyone going to dare take Cleveland? No. 
God, no, please. Atrocious. This might be our oh, atrocious. This might be our quickest picks ever. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well yeah. Billy across the board. All right, this next one we'll go around the table on. This is an interesting matchup. Indy, who is fresh off a terrible loss to Jacksonville. At Tennessee, who is fresh off a bye week. Um, Tennessee, they have looked uh, pretty bad. I think Indy's going to be mad after losing to Jacksonville. I'm going to go Indy here. Uh, Jared, who do you got? I'm actually really torn on this myself. Um, shoot. Um, gun to my head, I'm going Tennessee. Coming off a bye, I think maybe they figure some things out. I really don't know. This is a really weird game. This might be the weirdest game of the day. Yeah, um, we got three different. Matchup. We got three different picks already. This is gonna like do some crazy stuff to the standings. <laughs> this this is a it weird is. game, man. I don't. I, I really don't know who to take here. It is. You can I see like a tie it. here for all. Get I your Hamilton. Can. Go ahead. Jared, get your Hamilton or... got out. Pull a tie. Yeah. Be Seriously. Steve, you would know this. Ha have haven't these two teams tied a couple times recently? I don't think these two have. I think they've gone to. Oh, was it Jacksonville? Two. I think it was Jacksonville and Indy. There's been two teams in the South that have tied a couple times. I know um, <laughs> Indy hasn't beaten the, the Jags in Jacksonville in ten years now. Wow! Yeah, that long? Me, um, That's wild. Give me a minute, we'll look it up. I kind of wish I knew that before I picked last week. Hey, well, you still <laughs> I knew that. I still picked the Colts anyway because I figured they were due, but obviously they weren't due because they ah, lost. You figured <laughs> wrong. Andy. <laughs> Andy. Um, I'm going to agree with Jared here. I'm going with Tennessee. Um, again, weird matchup. And, you know, it's always weird games in Tennessee for some reason. It's just you never know what's going to happen down there. It's, it's always been that way. This Colts team is very shaky. Like I, I, I don't know. It's it's tough to go play two divisional games on the road too, and going into even though I don't think Tennessee really is that good, but they did have an impressive win over Miami. I got to give them credit for that. They did have the bye week. This is going to be another another tight divisional game, but I I do like the Titans this week. I'm feeling pretty good about all the different picks I have from Jared because Andy agrees with them all. Oh man, <laughs> I'm just kidding. roasted, absolutely roasted. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. I'm sorry. Uh, Steve, who do you got? All right, so there's been no ties in this series, but four of the last five have been one-score games. Ah. So it's been close. And with that, I want to go with the Titans. Uh, they, they haven't looked as bad as their record says. You, you know, for them, it's been the turnovers, you know, mostly from Will Levis just doing stupid stuff. You know, if, if they can avoid that, I think they get the win here. Let's go, Pollard. I need some touchdowns. All right, moving on to the 4 o'clock games. We got the L.A. Chargers at Denver. Denver, two wins in a row. They beat the Great. Jets. They beat the Raiders. Will they beat the Chargers? Jared, what do you think? I know the Chargers are coming off a bye here, but I'm going with Denver. Um, I'm not sold necessarily on Bo Nix. But this defense is really good. They're tough. They're physical. Their secondary is really good. Um, I mean, they, they you know, Las Vegas came out hot this weekend, 10 nothing right away. Uh, but then Pat Sertan, 100 yard interception return, completely changed the game. Um, they had a couple other interceptions, I think, this weekend. Uh, Denver. I actually started Denver's defense in fantasy, 20 points. Nice start. We'll, we'll go Denver, Denver this week. Steve, what do you got? I'm going to go with the Broncos to make it four straight wins. Beat Tampa, beat the Jets, beat the Raiders, and I think they get the win against the Chargers. All right, Andy. I'm going with the Broncos as well. I never thought oh, I'd say oh, it, but, oh. but it looks like they've, they've, they might be starting to turn the corner here. Maybe that win in Tampa Bay was not an aberration because uh, Jared, you know, is right. This, this defense has been very, very good. And um, looking kind of looking maybe like a little bit like the old Broncos, uh, in some of these games, this should be another into a tight game, but uh, I'm just not buying. Into, I still buy into the Chargers, and the Broncos are tough at home. They're always tough at Mile High. It's always a tough place to play. Uh, look at look at how many times the Patriots have, have just had horrible games out there, and they ended up winning there last year. But give me the Broncos. 
All right. Broncos across the board so far. Who am I going with? I'm going with the Chargers because they have something that Denver doesn't. Lad McConkey, baby. So give me the Chargers in a close one. It's going to be like a 13 to 12 Chargers win. Play the under on this one. Yeah. Uh, this should be a close one. Very interesting game. And it, I'll tell you what, if Denver wins this, especially, you got to start taking them a little seriously. Uh, I mean, you, you take them maybe a teeny bit seriously now since they beat the Jets, but if they could win three in a row, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but the Chargers are also off a of bye week, so I think they got their rest in, and I think that's really going to help. Uh, so I'm going to go Chargers here. I think they give Denver a reality check. All right, Pittsburgh at the Vegas Raiders. Is anyone going to dare and take the Raiders here? They have looked terrible. Oh, horrible. They're bad. Yes. Pittsburgh across the board. And yeah, it was 10 nothing this weekend, and then it was 34 to 10. Denver Stewart scored, I think, scored 34 straight points. That's horrible. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that Pittsburgh Dallas game, by the way, was really boring. It was one of the most boring games I've ever seen. Horrible. Uh, uh, Atlanta at Carolina. Is anyone taking the Red Rocket? Nope. All right. You watch. Atlanta's going to end up losing this game because that's what Atlanta does. I know. They right. probably will. They'll You're lose like right. 17 to 16. Oh, God. Please. No. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> if they they'll, can't they'll beat find Carolina, a way to lose. I mean, somehow. No. What was that, Jared? I said they'll probably find a new way to lose somehow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Arthur Blank will come out on the sideline again and they'll lose. This game's on at 425. This game has no business being on at 425. None. No, they should move this one and put this one in London. <laughs> Seriously, how is this game on at 425? Oh, no, it, it, it's, a, it's a 405 game. So okay. the, the markets who have a 1 o'clock game will get this as a filler game. The 425 game is Detroit-Dallas. Okay. Uh, so only only a few people will have to watch the wretched Atlanta Carolina game. Not to worry. Horrible. All right. This is uh, probably the best four o'clock game. Detroit at Dallas. Uh, we'll go around the table on this one. I'm going Detroit. Uh, I think they are looking very similar to how they looked last year. They're great on both sides of the ball. Uh, they will give up points, but they can also score points in a rapid pace. They're firing on all cylinders, and I don't think the Dallas offense can keep up with Detroit right now. So give me the Lions. Uh, Steve, who do you got? I'm going with Detroit. I think the Lions are just more consistent and more trustworthy. You know, the, the Cowboys have the talent, but as we've all seen, you know, they're up, they're down. They look great. Then they look terrible. You know, like, what can you really expect from them? Whereas Detroit's looked pretty good the whole year, much like last year. So, Lions. All right. Andy, who do you got? I'm taking Detroit as well. I don't trust Dallas. I, th I think the Lions are going to get back on track this week, and uh, we'll get a big win in Dallas. All right, Jared. You know who I'm taking. You don't even have to ask. <laughs> I don't even have to ask. Detroit across the board. Except for Jared, who took Dallas. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Sunday night football. Cincinnati Bengals at the New York Giants. Can I'm the just, Giants I'm... win two in a row? Is I'll anyone going to know? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincy the across the board. Cincinnati's D is crap, but Burrow's going to hammer this Giants defense. If they blow this game, I give, I might give up on Cincinnati. And... Oh, Tom, Cincinnati. I agree with you. This is a must. The Cincinnati cannot lose this game. No. This must win. Back Not against the wall, you gotta you gotta come out gunning. Yeah. Yes. I'm and I got Cincinnati. Guess, yeah. And the Vic D. Botetto angry rants are funnier. <laughs> and the Giants haven't scored a touchdown at home this year. So are I you, wonder if that streak will continue in this one. That is unbelievable. That's pretty <laughs> insane. Insane. Ha, ha, Although it's not surprising. No, it's not. I do think they will score some points against Cincinnati because Cincinnati's defense is pretty soft. Yeah, it's it's atrocious. Like yeah. in the last two home games, they put up what thirty eight points in each one. 
against Washington and Baltimore, you've lost both of them. They could be Burrow, and, Burrow and the offense have done their part. It's, it's the defense. The defense, you know, yeah. week one they did their job against the Pats, but outside of that, they've been awful. Even the Patriots have scored a touchdown at home this year. Yeah. yeah. The Giants have – that is unbelievable. Two home wow. games, they have not – I guarantee you that changes this Sunday night. <laughs> There's no way they're going to not score a touchdown against the Cincinnati secondary. <laughs> I think they'll score multiple touchdowns. And it'll be by Wandale Robinson. All right. <laughs> Monday night football. Buffalo at the New York Jets. Is anyone going to dare take the Jets? I am. Wow. All right. I think Jets. Justify yourself, Steven. I think that the Jets defense can give Josh Allen and the Bills a hard time. They have not played well the last two weeks. Historically, they haven't played great against the Jets, especially down there. I think they've lost it the last two years. It's just the matchup. You know, if there's one team that could consistently drive Josh Allen nuts, defensively, it's the Jets. So... And let's face it, the, the, the Jets lose this one. They're two and four. So, you know, for them, it's time to put up or shut up. They haven't looked good the last two weeks, but I, I think it's going to be one of those lower scoring, ugly, grinded out, not a lot of points. I think the Jets just somehow find a way to, to grab a dub. All right. I like it. Daring, very daring. I mean, you can't forget the Jets also have A.A. Ron, who – Looked bad last week, but I don't expect that every game from them. And they were playing like I'm pretty sure they throw the team in the sure league that, right I'm now. Sure they've thrown the ball a hundred times the last two games. Yeah, uh, they don't have a game. Ball. They don't run the ball. What are they doing? Not running. They're one of the best running backs in the league, and they're not running the ball. Well, he hasn't produced much. He hasn't. He doesn't get a lot of yards per carry. So I feel like. Phil, they why are you making Aaron Rodgers and throw a hundred times the last two games? That's insane. Absolutely it's, insane. Uh, that's not the how Jets O-line needs some work. The Jets O-line is a little rough, too. All right, bye weeks this week. Uh, Kansas City, the Rams, Miami, and Minnesota. So there are our week six picks. Should be very interesting. There's going to be a lot of changes in the standings after this week. We get a lot of different picks, so it should be very fun. Uh, disclaimer, don't listen to anything we say or take any of our advice. <laughs> take it at your yeah. own risk. Words of advice. Facts. <laughs> yes. But believe it or not, we're out of time for this segment, but we do have a few minutes for final thoughts. So any final thoughts? Who would like to start? Andy, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not, not sports related, but uh, just – Really hope that uh, everyone stays safe uh, down in Florida with the impending hurricane. Uh, that is uh, Hurricane Milton the heading to the, the Gulf Coast. I know we were talking before we came on the air that looks like the Bruins game uh, most likely is, is going to be going to be postponed. I think for pretty much anything, everything in that area probably is going to be postponed this week. I know the Buccaneers were flying out tomorrow morning uh, to get to New Orleans for their game because the, all the airports are shutting down. But uh Really just hope and pray that uh, it, it, it isn't as bad as they say it is. Yeah, absolutely. I hope uh, everybody down in Florida, stay safe, listen to the orders. They say evacuate, get out of there. Do yourself a favor. It's going to be a nasty hurricane. Uh, Jared, any final thoughts? I second everything Andy just said. My My parents live down there. Uh, my parents sold their house in Hudson this year to uh, move down there full time. And, uh, you know, they're in kind of the jackpot zone where they could now maybe lose their house. So, um, you know, fortunately, they're going out to California where my sister lives. Um, you know, probably going to spend a lot of time there, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, just, I'm glad my parents are getting out of there, but concerned about their house. Um, they are kind of right by the water. So, yeah, just again, agree with everything Andy just said. And, you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, it will, I think, weaken a bit as it gets towards land because uh, it's really in a ripe area right now to, uh, you know, strengthen. But uh, as it gets closer to land, it will weaken a bit. I just hope uh, the damage is not completely catastrophic. That's all I got. Yep, absolutely. Steve, any final thoughts? Yeah, looking forward to the start of brewing season. You know, right now it's scheduled to start at Florida 
tomorrow night, uh, which will be in, in the past tense by the time this airs, of course. So, you know, we'll see if the game goes off or not. And then uh, the home opener against the uh, the hated Habs on Thursday. So looking forward to that. And, um, you know, hopefully things aren't as bad, aren't as bad as they could potentially be in, in Florida. Milton looks like a monster of a storm. Mm. So, you know, hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, I uh, fourth that I guess. Uh, certainly my thoughts are with all those folks that were affected by the hurricane uh, a week or so ago and the and the ones that are going to be affected by this hurricane. Certainly a very rough uh, hurricane season. I just hope everybody uh, stays safe, does what they are told. If they're told to evacuate, serious, take it seriously. And do what you can to get out of there because, uh, unfortunately, I got a feeling it's going to be a very bad one. So, uh, be safe, everybody. We're certainly praying for you. Uh, but we got, uh, believe it or not, we're almost at the end of the high school fall sports season. Uh, it's flying by. Just a few more weeks left until the playoffs. So uh, we got some big Hiller games coming up. So be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, for our upcoming broadcast schedule. Uh, these games are uh, getting crucial. And pretty much all the Hiller teams are right on the cusp of a uh, playoff spot. So we'll have some good ones coming at you in the very near future. But that is going to do it for this segment of HCAM Sports Talk. For Andy Barron, Jared Keene, Steve Watson, I'm Tom Nappy. As always, we thank you for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody. In week five of the Hiller Fall Sports Season, Hiller Girls Volleyball battled Medfield on Monday, September 30th. Steve Sweetapple and Matt Clancy had the call. Another good serve. Bump set outside. Good swing. Nice dig out. Oh, hand on there it, but it works. 1,000 assists. There you go, Gabby. Nice job, Gabby. 1,000 assists. That's, that's an incredible feat. Well done, Gabby. I yep, that was going <laughs> I don't long. I think it was going. Elsa bump. Gabby outside. Adriana. Oh, nice. Wow. Oh. Nice dig, Liv. We're just trading bullets here. And the nice go swing by Adriana oh, down God. the line. What placement. Hopkinton takes the first set 25 to 21. Wow, Matt. Both teams coming out firing tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for set number two. What a first set. And what a way to finish with a down-the-line shot there. Oh, nice. wow. The bat nice, the pushes. nice, 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 set. nice. Elsa gets the 25th point of the second set. Hopkinton takes the second set. Same identical score, 25-21. Oh, yes. that's it. Great roll from Adrian. Roll Adriana. shot to end it. Hopkinton takes the third set, 25-16 for a 3-0 win. And uh, once again, first place in the Tri-Valley League. What a, what a match, Matt. What a match. What a statement win by Hopkinton to come out in a match that had big TVL implications. Hiller Girls Volleyball captured an upset 3-0 sweep of the Medfield Warriors. The Hillers improve to 10 and 4, plus capture their seventh victory via sweep of the season. Medfield fell to 9 and 3. In the win, Gabby Patty tallied her 1,000th career assist. Congratulations, Gabby, on achieving the tremendous landmark. Adriana Aquino had 15 kills. Evie Woodbury served up eight aces. Elsa Woodbury and Olivia Carrazza tallied 12 digs each. The Hillers have now won seven of their last eight matches. On Tuesday, October 1st, Hiller Girls Soccer hosted Norton. 
about midway through the first half. It was a scoreless game until this happened. Recupero. Looking to approach. Into the box. Around the defender. Takes it. Got it. Rips it in. Matty Recupero nets her 14th goal of the season, and the Hillers lead it one to nothing heading into the second half. Sits it up, right in. Nina takes it, and it's off the keeper's hands and put in. Adaga Kalkani off the deflection. Hillers trying to work their way into the box. Nice move. Sends it over and Calcone nets it! What a feed! By Recupero. And Anaga Calcone powers it in for her second goal of the game and second goal of the season. Line Corcoran set for the corner, airs it out. Deflections all over and it's put in for Norton. Nina, here comes Recupero, out in front, got it! Matty Recupero responds. They respond about 49 seconds later. Up top, crosses it and it's put in! Hillers add four more goals in the second half and take their 10th consecutive win, five to one, over the Norton Lancers. The Hillers are a perfect 10 and 0 on the season. Madison Recupero came through big once again, netting a hat trick. Recupero now has 16 goals on the season. Also that Tuesday, boys and girls cross country improved to 3 and 0 with wins over Ashland. The boys take the 29-31 win and the girls captured a 19 to 41 win. For the girls, Elise Srodawa won the individual title by more than a minute. Sofia Warnetsky took second place. On the boys' side, Sean Finnegan finished first place, and Stephen Layton was right behind Finnegan, finishing in a close second place. Their next meet will be on Wednesday, October 9th at the Holliston High School course. On Wednesday, October 3rd, Hiller Field Hockey hosted Medfield. It was a scoreless game heading into the second quarter. Find their way in. Sent out in front. There's a shot, and it is in. Abby Burke with the score. Finnegan sends it in. Up top, Ballas. Looking for the shot here. Deflected in the attack area and put in. Another score for the Hillers. Abby Burke makes it two to nothing. Her second goal of the game. Go Medfield's away. They're gonna move quickly here. 20 seconds left. Crosby sends it back into the box. And that was nearly put in, but then it is. Off the post, the long distance shot went. And then Medfield able to stuff it in. The Hillers take a two to one lead heading into the second half but Medfield drew several penalty corner opportunities. Thompson sends it in. Sent over to the left of the shooter circle. Kicked out. And they'll get another opportunity. The Hiller defense and goaltender Riley Curtin survive a dozen Medfield penalty corners and hang on for the 2-1 to win. Hillers improved to 5-4-1 and one, and have gone 4-0-1 oh, in their last five games. Medfield falls to 7-2-1. and one. Congratulations to the Hillers on the hard-fought win. On Wednesday, October 16th, HCAM premieres a new series called TVL Sportsnet. The program will air on nearly all public access cable stations who cover TVL teams and features stories, highlights, and interviews from throughout the league. And right now, we give you a sneak peek at the brand new series, which premieres very soon on HCAM 
and other TVL Town stations, TVL Sportsnet. For the last 21 years, the Holliston Panthers were led by head coach Todd Kiley. During Coach Kiley's 21 seasons at Holliston, the Panthers won seven TVL championships and three state championship titles. The Holliston Panthers have become one of the most competitive and elite football programs in the state and for the first time since 2003, will have a new head coach attempting to maintain that reputation after Todd Kiley departed from the program and took the head coaching job at Franklin High School. This season, former assistant coach at Bishop Fian, Mike Yuroff, was hired as Holliston's new football head coach. And in the early days of this fall season, our friends at HCAT TV in Holliston caught up with Coach Yuroff and this year's Holliston Panthers football captain. With new head coach Mike Yuroff and his new freshman coach, Mike Mullen. Coach, welcome to Holliston. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to be here, Mike. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, you got a whole new staff. We're talking about a lot of changes that are happening this year at the football program. Why don't you talk a little bit about your staff? Yeah. And a little background on your own, too. Sure, sure. Um, you know, we had the mountain of a task to build an entire staff starting July 12th. So to come out and have a full staff, uh, you know, four freshman coaches, JV and varsity coaches as well, um, that was our biggest, you know, kind of obstacle to overcome. We've done it with a lot of guys that I've known for 20 years, um, guys that then knew other guys. Um, and we just tried to bring in guys that want to coach hard, fast, and really want to teach. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're doing, and the kids have to buy into it. But you have to be knowledgeable, and you have to be a good teacher. And when I talked to every coach that's on board, that was the first thing I was doing, trying to assess them. And that was a, quite a long process? Or? Yeah, it took, it took quite a bit. Um, you know, I immediately locked up a few guys I knew right away. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we had to convince a couple of guys. Um, our defensive coordinator, Bob Conrad, uh, great football mind, you know, 20 plus years doing it. Um, you know, played in high school and college. And, you know, he was the coordinator up until the end of July for an area high school. Mm -hmm. So to convince him to leave that high school and come here was, you know, huge for us. And, and that goes for a lot of these guys. Yeah. Um, you know, they gave up something or they're driving close to an hour a day just to get here. But, you know, they believe in the history here. Uh, they believe in what I think we're going to do. And, um, you know, it all worked out. So we're pretty happy. So we have Coach Conrad and um, his son, is it Zach? Is he coaching too? Yeah, his son, Zach. Uh, Zach played at Walpole. He played up at Plymouth State. Uh, he was a linebacker up there and defensive lineman. He'll be coaching our offensive line uh, and linebackers as well. He'll be the JV defensive coordinator. Good, yeah. good. And Mike, you're the head uh, freshman coach? Yes, sir. And uh, your staff? Uh, we have Kenny McGuire, Kevin McShane, and Artie Barnes. Um, two firefighters and a corrections officer, so we're in good <laughs> shape there. Uh, I myself, I'm lucky enough to be here in Holliston the last four years uh, working in the high school. I'm actually the business teacher right now as well. Oh, nice. And your background? Um, from, moved here from Colorado in 2020. Uh, played high school out there at Chatfield Senior High, and then played uh, semi-professionally at Metro State Denver. What position did you play? Receiver and safety. Well, there you go. Yeah, there so there finding you. Mike in the building was huge. Um, you know, right away when I got the job, they brought his name up to me. And, you know, I talked to him for five minutes on the phone. I'm like, all right, this is great. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, just another presence in the building. Um, the kids all respond well to him. And, you know, frankly, Mike's here, you know, with me because we need that feeder program. You know, to build this program, it's not for tomorrow. It's for the next 10 years. So the freshmen are instrumental. I'm Charlie Stott. I play offensive line and defensive line. I'm Lucas Badenkoff. I play linebacker and D-line. I'm Caleb Greenberg. I play O-line and D-line. Sounds good, guys. And one of the uh, things we're kind of focusing on today is that the changes that are, that are here this year with a lot of different changes. Of course, you guys getting a whole new group of players and a whole new coaching staff. Um, and the coaching staff actually kind of came together late around July, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So you guys as coaches, how is it different I mean, as captains? How is it different this year for you guys to when you held your practices and stuff together without a coaching staff? Um, I don't know. It felt a little weird at first because it didn't have like much structure to it. It was kind of hard to get it started. 
because, you know, you usually have, like, some coaches there, and they, you know, it's easier for people to listen to a coach than maybe just like, a captain. But, um, you know, later on in the season, like in the summer, I think people started to, like, realize that it's just the same. And, you know, we still have to work for as hard just to for the season to get ready. Yeah, same same thing, Lucas. Yeah, you know, like what Charlie said, we got the same guys around us, so it's going to be somewhat the same. Um, you know, starting out when we didn't really have a full coaching staff, um, we just tried to keep the team camaraderie together, you know, keep everyone close, and I think that was an important part of it. But also just staying in the weight room, you know, keeping in good shape was important for us. Good. Caleb? Yeah, just the weight room was big for us in the off season because that was really the only thing we could do because like, we didn't really know what drills to do or anything because we ran out of them in like a week. Yeah. So it was just... Hi, everybody. Up the far side of the box she comes. Approach, she takes it, got it! Hiller, strike first! Tina gives it a boot. Wow! She strikes from long distance. There's Chow. She'll take a shot. Oh, it's bobbled and then put in. Allison Green. That's it for the Hillers. Nina. it over. Looking for the shot and putting it in is Nicole Edstone. Her second goal of the game. She finds Collarin. Closing it. Collarin takes it and got it. Two nothing Hillers. What a feed from Recupero and what a shot by Collarin. Sends it over and Calcutta answers. 